Saat farkından merhaba, her hafta dünyadan farklı seslere yer vermeye çalışıyoruz. Bu hafta Birleşik Arap Emirlikleri'nden önemli bir konuğum var. Uzun yıllardır ilişkilerin gergin seyrettiği Birleşik Arap Emirlikleri ile son dönemde karşılıklı adımlar atılıyor. Bugün Bayeli akademisyen ve yazar Abdülhalik Abdullah ile ağırlıklı olarak Türkiye Baye ilişkilerini ve tabii bölgesel konuları konuşacağız. Ehlen ve sehlen Profesör. Happy to join you, Faizu. Thank you very much for your time, Professor. So, uh, Professor, uh, let's start with uh, recent developments between uh, Turkey and the UAE. Uh, Turkish President Erdogan held a phone call with Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Uh, also, UAE's uh, National Security Advisor, Sheikh Tahnun bin Zayed Al Nahyan, recently met uh, with him in Ankara. So, these are truly significant events in years. Uh, so, first, I want to ask, uh, How did we come here after uh, years of tension, uh, even hostility, we can call it? Uh, what motivated uh, the UAE to improve its relations with Turkey? Faddal. Well, Faisal, the UAE has been uh, on the move for some time to de-escalate tension in the region. And uh, it has been a leading force, it has been a leading voice Uh, to try to lessen tension in the region for some times, maybe a year or two ago. And I think uh, the UAE is seeing that the region had enough of this rivalry, tension, conflict between the leading forces in here. So it is moving gradually but surely to de-escalate uh, tension. So that's the first, uh, I think, uh, Uh, reason. It just falls into this overall UAE's move to escalate, not just with Turkey, but we have seen it uh, in, in, in other places, Qatar, Yemen, mm -hmm. Horn of Africa, Libya. So I think this is part of an overall UAE's drive to bring back some stability to a region that is desperately in need of stability. And mm -hmm. as a result, uh, Uh, you know, years of rifts, years of conflict and rivalries did not take us anywhere. Uh, it was very costly to everybody. It damaged a lot of uh, um, uh, people around us, and it brought havoc to a region that uh, deserves uh, uh, some uh, a period of, uh, of, of stability. So. There is this new phase that UAE is moving into, and this is a new phase in UAE's uh, uh, Turkey relationship. It is trying to take uh, the hour back to where it was, 2011. We had one uh, decade of conflict, we had one decade yeah, of yeah. tension, and I think it's time to disengage. Mm -hmm. uh, I will come to that uh, broader uh, UAE's foreign policy later, Professor. But f uh, first, I want to ask you also, since the beginning of the Arab Spring, uh, actually, bilateral relations have worsened. Uh, so Muslim Brotherhood uh, was perhaps the most problematic issue. And there are some other policy differences uh, as well, of course, from Libya to uh, Eastern Mediterranean. So do you believe Turkey, UAE rapprochement uh, has a lasting potential? Uh, or let me ask... Uh, Another way, is Muslim Brotherhood uh, still a major issue? Uh, I think we had uh, this major issue called Turkish support for Muslim Brotherhood. And it was not an issue for the UAE, but it was an issue for Saudi Arabia, it was an issue for Egypt, it was an issue for a lot of countries in, in the region. So I think it was since 2013, when Muslim Brotherhood took over uh, Egypt. And uh, uh, since then, the Turkish uh, support, embracing of, Turk of, of Muslim Brotherhood, and even betting on them as a force for change, as a force to increase its influence in the region, it was a major issue. The fact that Turkey has finally uh, restarted its relationship and rethinking, is rethinking its relationship with Muslim Brotherhood is a huge uh, a boost to the relationship. So yes, it was a very uh, important uh, uh, factor. But then let's not forget that also Turkey took a position vis-a-vis -vis Egypt for the past mm -hmm. 10 years. 
Turkey was in this collusion with Egypt, and it was also, uh, uh, you know, going around uh, trying to uh, 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 take an issue with the government of Abu Fattah, with the president Abu Fattah al-Sisi, and uh, trying to destabilize Egypt. And Turkey was at it for the past almost 10 years. So that has gone also. Libya was another issue that came up uh, during this uh, one decade of rift between Ankara and Abu Dhabi. So there are several of those uh, uh, issues. Muslim Brotherhood was just one of them. And uh, for, uh, for the good or for worse, now there is Turkish recognition that UAE is a major regional player, and it wants to, 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 to reconcile with it. And UAE is very flexible. UAE is very pragmatic. And uh, it is opening a new pages when it comes to the relationship between Ankara and the UAE. We're going back again to where we should be, 2011, economically, investment-wise, politically, geopolitics-wise. So it is the uh, end of one decade of bad relationship and start of a new one. Mm -hmm. So in the new era, uh, Professor, you think uh, economic, uh, I, I mean, economy will uh, be dominant or uh, at the same time, because, you know, uh, during the high level uh, meeting, uh, especially uh, the both sides said the investments uh, will improve in the coming uh, up future. So economy will uh, really be dominant or uh, diplomatic relations will be as, as good as economy, economic relations, do you think? You know, those who are following UAE-Turkey relationship, they could easily point out that despite the, U, the geopolitical tension and despite the political rift, which was at its lowest sometimes, when, you know, the, 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 the coup in Turkey and when uh, President Erdogan pointed to the UAE and all along, uh, uh, when we have so much rhetoric coming from Turkey trying to blame UAE for everything that is going wrong in, in the region, and uh, UAE blaming Iran and Turkey for everything that is going on in the region. One thing that was not affected drastically was the trade relationship, was the yeah, investment yeah. side of it, was the economic uh, uh, side of the relationship. This was uh, going uh, uh, despite the political rift, indeed, in many in many indicators, it was even uh, uh, going higher and higher and getting better and better. So the economics was always solid, and now it is even the foundation for the uh, years to come years to come of good relationship. So the geopolitics aside, political issues aside, it is the economic that is the bedrock for the relationship in the decades and years to come. Mm -hmm. So uh, the changing regional and global developments surely play the role also for both sides to reevaluate their foreign policies, uh, as you also mentioned, Professor. And some argue that uh, the UAE is boosting its diplomatic strategy and uh, turning a new page on its more uh, adventurous uh, foreign policy. What's your take on that? Uh, how does the UAE reshape its regional policy particularly following uh, Biden's presidency? The UAE has been an emerging powerhouse uh, for the past 10 years. And its influence was increasing right and left, east and west. And the UAE has this momentum that is still going on as a rising middle power that has the friends that has a network of partners and networks of allies from Morocco all the way to India and beyond. So it has managed during the last 10 years to build this vast network of relationship that extends from Morocco to the west and all the way uh, to India, to the east and everything in between. So the UAE is feeling that it is an important regional power and has acted accordingly. There is nothing assertiveness about it. There is nothing adventurous about it. It's just a fact of life. UAE is the second biggest economy in the region, 400 plus billion billion dollar economy with a lot of investment all over the place with 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 a, a sovereign wealth fund that can be used as a soft power not just as a, as a hard power so the uae is a is an important uh, uh, 
and a major uh, regional pl player in Middle East, North Africa, and beyond. And at one point of time, uh, Turkey didn't want to recognize this. At one point of time, uh, Turkey wanted to, 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 to get an in, in, in inclusion with it. UAE has reached next door to Turkey with 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 growing relationship with Greece, with Cyprus, with uh, with uh, with Egypt in the Mediterranean, East Mediterranean. So nobody should discount the UAE as a rising power. You could either reconcile with it, you could either get benefit of it, but if you are in collusion with it, I think uh, everybody pays the price for, for it. And we appreciate the fact that finally Erdogan in his statement just a week ago, after his meeting or during his meeting with Sheikh yeah. Tahnoun, the National Security Advisor, recognizing the UAE as a regional power that deserves his respect and admiration. And obviously, the UAE also recognizes Turkey as a regional power, right? So, as far as I understand, now both sides accept each other uh, despite their differences uh, after like 10 years, right? Absolutely. I think this is an important recognition in both sides, Turkey has always been a regional power. UAE understood this very well. But when Turkey went further in its, uh, let's say, expansionist policy in the region, in Syria, in Libya, in Tunisia, in Horn of Africa, etc., and sometimes on the wrong side of it, with the support for Muslim Brotherhood, this is where, when, when things were uh, in, 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 in when we pushed it, when we went into a rough time, not just with the UAE and Turkey relationship, but with Saudi Arabia, with Egypt, with some major Arab countries. The fact that Turkey is pulling back and recognizing the fact that there are these countries that it needs economically and investment-wise and geopolitically, this is when I think this revisiting of Turkey and its stand and its relationship, I, I think uh, uh, Turkey is, is becoming uh, now a, a, a force for moderation, a force for stability, and UAE and everybody else is welcoming this new uh, uh, Turkey that uh, we have, uh, that we were in conflict with during the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, this overall uh, policy adjustment or shift, let's say, was obvious, uh, of course, when the blockade on Qatar ended earlier this year. Uh, core differences between the Quartet and Qatar are surely still there. But did the GCC really uh, turn a new page? Uh, what are the challenges for the future stability of the Union, Professor? Uh, look, we call it... Uh uh, boycott, not a blockade. There has never been blockade of Qatar, but there was always a boycott of Qatar, yes, for the last three and a half years. And countries usually uh, use whatever means at their disposal, sometimes recalling ambassadors, sometimes getting, getting diplomatic relationship, but sometimes also going through to uh, a boycott when they are unhappy. And when they see uh, uh, anemic uh, uh, gestures coming from whoever it is, so uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, uh, Egypt, Bahrain, four major countries, so that uh, talk with Qatar is not going anywhere, that Qatar is not living up to its commitment. So there come boycott. But I think after three years during the Al Ula uh, summit in Riyadh just six months ago in January 2000. 21, I think we are putting past the past the boycott and the past uh, uh, tension behind us, and we're starting a, uh, starting a new phase with Qatar and in GCC uh, uh, relationship. I think we, we are heading into the right direction. Part of it is uh, due to this uh, new role that the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and everybody else is trying to, to play, reduce tension, get over the conflicts, and let's start a new relationship. I think we are better off today, GCC-wise. The six GCC mm -hmm. countries are better off today, 2021, than they were during 2020. And I think we will have a better 2022, a year from now, you would see that the relationship is coming, going back to complete normal uh, uh, as it was before. And we saw that because of Sheikh Tahnoun's visit to Doha just last week, and mm -hmm. because of the meeting, the high-profile meeting between the, the Emir of Qatar and the Prime Minister of the UAE, Sheikh Mohammed uh, bin Rashid, during the summit 
in Baghdad. So I think we are uh, now into reconciliation, and the train is going to its last uh, uh, stop, and uh, we are almost there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Professor, I really wonder, because there were uh, 13 demands, as far as I, under uh, I remember, uh, from Qatar, including, you know, Turkish military base in Doha, uh, Doha's close ties to Iran, and uh, also, you know, uh, support to Muslim Brotherhood. So these demands uh, are still valid or they are not relevant at all anymore? These demands were for negotiation purposes. And I think uh, Qatar has lived up to many of them, if not all of them, including its uh, uh, reconsidering its relationship to Muslim Brotherhood, that's number one. It's uh, uh, destabilizing rhetoric against uh, Egypt, which was a second issue there. Thirdly, I think uh, 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 Al Jazeera TV mm -hmm. has reduced its, uh, uh, its uh, uh, it's editorial line. We have seen it probably, uh, you know, reduced to something that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, in many fronts, uh, uh, usually when there is dispute, we come uh, to middle ground. And I think we have covered all the middle ground that there is and even more. So I think, uh, yes, uh, the, the, the quartet, the four countries they put, that put, they put, they boycotted Qatar, had their own demands, but it was uh, a demand for negotiation. And I think uh, we have uh, fulfilled more than half of them. I see. Uh, so, Professor, also recent tensions between Saudi Arabia and the UAE uh, have raised some questions. Uh, the rift uh, between the two allies uh, has been exaggerated, you think? Yes, I think we have seen during Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of Egypt, of the United Arab Emirates, when he visited Saudi Arabia and met with the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, that, you know, relationship uh, are, are solid. Uh, the allies are, uh, uh, are on, the, on the same pages on major issues, whether it is bilateral or regional. So I think my, uh, my estimate is that we are still, as we were, two strong allies, that uh, uh, the relationship is as solid as it was. But lately, I think we have seen increased economic competition between the mm -hmm. two biggest economies in the Arab world. It's Saudi Arabia and UAE are the two biggest economies. And Saudi Arabia is, uh, Saudi Arabia is privatizing, opening up. So it needs to do a lot of uh, uh, laws and new regulations. And sometimes this competition could be very healthy. But if it gets out of hand, it could be a little bit uh, uh, unhealthy and nasty. And yeah, yeah. if it falls and it has, uh, if it does have any political fall off, that is going to be worse. But I think the leadership in two countries are trying to keep it as it is, healthy economic competition, good for both of them. Mm -hmm. So, Professor, let's talk about the U.S. a little bit. Uh, U.S. presence in the region has been declining, and uh, recent withdrawal from Afghanistan was a clear sign of that. Uh, I want to ask, uh, what are the lessons for the Gulf uh, in terms of dependency on Washington? Washington will remain a, an indispensable ally partner of the six Arab Gulf states. And it is still a superpower, no matter what it does, whether it's, it pulls out of Afghanistan or whatever. This is still a superpower, the only superpower. Of course, there is a Chinese competition, but it's still politically, militarily, technologically, financially, the UAE superpower that is needed in Turkey, that is needed by us, that is needed by Japan, by Korea, by even... European. So the United States is, is indispensable, and everybody wants a good relationship. Uh, the, the, I mean, we have a, all of the GCC countries do, but the UAE in particular have the best relationship uh, with the United States since uh, 1971, the establishment of the United Arab Emirates. That's number one. However, there are new dynamics in world politics, and there is a new dynamics. Uh, in, in Washington itself, trying to rethink its role globally. They want to have less and less engagement with 
many regions, but particularly the Middle East. So we see them pulling out of Afghanistan already. We see them talking about uh, reducing their presence in, uh, in Iraq and Syria and other places. So we need to adjust to America that is trying to disengage itself from Middle East. That is their uh, issue. But then the Afghan uh, pullout uh, uh, raised another issue, which is trust in America. I think trust in America today is the slowest. Uh, trust in American estimates, uh, uh, intelligent estimates at its lowest. Trust in America's uh, protection is at its lowest. Uh, trust in the American president who says something one day and just the next week uh, changes uh, his mind and uh, find, yeah. we find out that he is not in full uh, the awareness of what's going on. So trust mm -hmm. in America, which is a very important uh, uh, commodity has reduced, has shrunk lately. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just have to see whether America can compensate for it or not, uh, Faisal. So what is the UAE's vision for post-American era then, uh, Professor? What do you think? What do you suggest, or let's say? We will maintain the best of relationship with America. But the world is going into post-America phase. And post-America phase means that America alone cannot cannot run the world all by itself. But then all the countries together can't run the world and its problems and its issues without America. That's post-America as we understand it. So you need to deal with this post-America. This can have ramification for Gulf security. And we are probably going into a phase called post-Arab Gulf post-America Arab Gulf, okay? Mm -hmm. So America probably will reduce its presence militarily, maybe politically, 1%, 2%, 10% over the next five years, and Arab countries, Arab Gulf states are maybe uh, uh, heading into the direction when that eventuality comes. I see. Uh, professor, speaking of Afghanistan, uh, I have two or three minutes uh, left, but I want to ask before closing this, uh, how do you see Taliban's takeover? Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Qatar emerged as a key player uh, in Afghanistan after U.S. pullout. Uh, also, Taliban is reportedly in talks with Qatar along with Turkey uh, for airport security. And the U.S. operations have been transferred to Qatar. This will also give a new leverage to Doha. Uh, on the other hand, Ashraf Ghani is in the UAE. And also back in the 19th, uh, the UAE was one of the few countries uh, to recognize the Taliban's role. So what happens now? Uh, what will be the UAE's strategy for the new Taliban era? I think uh, uh, the takeover of Taliban in such a way is not very comforting. Let's uh, uh, be candid and frank about it. Taliban is still a very ideological uh, uh, movement and uh, it doesn't know how to run a country as we see, see, see saw it during the first uh, uh, phase in 1996 and 2011, and they have a, a shadowy relationship with, uh, with, 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 with terrorist organizations uh, uh, such as Al Qaeda, and maybe uh, now they have to deal with ISIS uh, trying to take. Uh, capital and take advantage of the havoc and the chaos that, that could emerge. So Afghanistan is only 2,000 kilometers away from the Arab Gulf states. And we, yeah, yeah. If, if Afghanistan goes into a destabilizing state, this is, of course, worrying. But then again, UAE uh, had a relationship with, uh, with Taliban. We accommodated and hosted the first round of uh, talk between Taliban and America here in Abu Dhabi. 2018, so we have good relationship with them, just like the rest of the Arab Gulf states, not just uh, Qatar alone. So let's just all wait and see. Let's see if uh, uh, Taliban uh, uh, six months down the road. If they behave like they should uh, behave, then I think every country in the world have the interest to stabilize Afghanistan. But if they behave like uh, the way they did in 1996, then I think the entire uh, international community will stand against them, and they're going to go into a round of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things might not look very well for them, and they might not even last five years as they did last time. So let's wait and see them, you say? Definitely. We are all waiting to see and uh, 
Uh, we're looking at Afghanistan very closely and monitoring things. And I think that's how everybody is behaving these days. Okay, well, unfortunately, time is up, Professor. Uh, hopefully, uh, when you come to Istanbul, uh, we will have coffee and we will discuss about this regional developments. Looking forward to meeting you in Ankara or in Istanbul. Uh, uh, please, let's make it in Istanbul, Professor, because I don't really like Ankara. <laughs> in Istanbul it is, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you so much. Ma salama. Shukran jazila. Thank you for having me. Ma salama. Evet, bu hafta da böylelikle saat farkını noktalamış olduk. Birleşik Arap Emirlikleri'nden e, akademisyen, yazar Abdülhalik Abdullah konuğumuzdu. Türkiye Birleşik Arap Emirlikleri'nin yeni dönemde ilişkilerini konuştuk. Önümüzdeki hafta yine farklı bir konuyla, farklı bir konukla görüşmek dileğiyle. Hoşçakalın.